Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Get Play Soon. In this video, we are going to discuss types of kernel in operating system. This is the fifth video in the series of operating system. In the previous video, we have discussed about the basics of kernel. So if you didn't watch the previous video, make sure you watch that before you come to this video. Now let's get started with the types of kernel. The first type of kernel we are going to discuss today is monolithic kernel. The monolithic kernel is the most straightforward and widely used type of kernel. You can see how simple the design is here. Applications are nothing but the softwares and it is connected with the kernel, connected with the hardware. So the design is pretty simple and straightforward. Now let's look at this design deeply. The application and hardware remains the same. Now looking at the kernel part. In the kernel part, we've already discussed there are two modes, right? User mode and kernel mode. All these things, all these modes are explained in the previous video. If you haven't watched, make sure you watch it. So in the kernel mode, both user and kernel services like IPC, file system, device drivers, memory, system calls, all these important things are run only in kernel mode. So we are not using user mode at all. Also, every single thing is arranged in the same memory space. The device drivers and all the kernel things, everything is present in the same space and in the same mode, right? So this is how monolithic kernel works. So single address space for kernel and drivers. As I already said, this is very straightforward and widely used. So it is efficient, but there is a drawback in this model. Just because device driver and kernel, everything happens in the same place. If there is a bug in device driver, the entire system crashes. The examples are Linux and Unix. Moving ahead, we have microkernel. A microkernel is stripped down version of monolithic kernel where kernel can do most of the job. Here you can see we have some other thing called servers. You already know we have two modes right in kernel. One is user mode and kernel mode. Here user and kernel services operate in separate spaces. User mode, kernel mode. So we can reduce the size of kernel I mean, in the previous approach, we have monolithic where everything is present in kernel only. Here we are reducing the size of kernel by dividing it into user mode and kernel mode. So the user mode is nothing but servers here. Kernel, you already know, applications is nothing but the softwares. Now let's look deeply into this architecture. Here you already have the application, the hardware as you already know. Now look at the kernel part, the middle part. You have two modes here. The kernel is divided into two modes. One is user mode and the kernel mode. You can see in the architecture, most servers like Unix server, file server, IPC, device driver, every single thing is in user mode. All these things are kept in user mode to enhance stability and security. And basic IPC, virtual memory and scheduling, etc. are present in kernel mode. So basically, it's an extended version of monolithic kernel where the kernel is divided into two parts, user mode and kernel mode. In the left side diagram, servers is nothing but the user mode. So this is how micro kernel works. Unlike monolithic kernel, in the user mode, the majority of the components run within containers. For example, device driver has its own container. File server has its own container. All the internal things run within their containers. So in case if there is even any failure occurs, there will not be a problem. There will not be a position where you need to restart the whole system. So this is one benefit when compared to monolithic kernel. Moving ahead, just a recap. Essential servers in user space. So as we already discussed, all the essential things are divided into two things, kernel mode and user mode. The user mode is nothing but the servers here. It is smaller and faster and the stability is improved when compared to monolithic kernel. The examples are L4 and Minix. The next type is hybrid kernel. This kernel is what we see the most. Windows, Apple's, Mac OS, everywhere we see hybrid kernel. Hybrid kernel is nothing but a mix of monolithic kernel and micro kernel. You can see in the picture, the server that is the user mode is again placed into the kernel, right? It moves out the drivers but keep the system servers inside the kernel. Now let's deeply understand the architecture. Here you can see the user mode and kernel mode. The servers, the file server, Unix server, everything is placed inside the kernel. So this is how the architecture looks in the hybrid kernel. So it mixes monolithic and micro kernel features. So when I say hybrid kernels, 
So when it mixes monolithic and micro kernel features, it balances performance and modularity. You can actually understand that hybrid kernels borrow speed from monolithic kernels and modularity from micro kernels. So all these things, all the best parts in both the kernels are mixed and made this hybrid kernel. So while building, best version is built based on the needs. So the examples are Windows, Mac OS kernels. Moving ahead, we have nano kernel. Nano kernels are super tiny computer systems, like just a very, very few thousand lines of code. This is used in small, small gadgets, small, small devices like embedded systems, IoT gadgets, etc. So they don't have a lot of space also in terms of the size of the system. So it is very small. So the operating system is like a small toy for them. So you can see in my uh, IoT devices, the house appliances everywhere, the system will be so small like an oven, washing machine. So all these things are nano kernels. Moving ahead, we have the fifth type of kernel that is exo kernel. Exo kernels are different because they let computer programs talk directly to machines hardware. Okay, so uh, the applications can control the hardware directly, even though they need to be handled carefully. They allow for making systems that fit perfectly for what you need. So exo kernels are still in development process. It promotes flexibility and efficiency. The examples are uh, EXOS and Nemesis. So these are the five types of kernels we've seen monolithic, micro, hybrid, nano and exo kernel. So that's it from my side. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you like this video. I hope you understood what I've said. If you have any doubts, feel free to comment below. Bye bye.